Hi guys, I'm Ryde from Coffee Beans Delivered and today I want to start a video series that's going to go over a couple of different videos on what affects the flavour of your coffee. So when you're drinking your cappuccino or your long black at different places, you might notice that certain flavours come through in different coffees. And there's a lot of different factors that go into that. Some are naturally occurring and some are sort of forced. But today I want to talk about one of the reasons that your coffees might change in flavour and that's to do with the processing. So what does the word processing actually mean? You see it flashed around on all the little labels that you get with every coffee and there's some big jargon words like natural, honey washed, semi washed, pulped natural and then some crazy ones like carbonic maceration and anaerobic fermentation. What the heck does that even mean? Well, these are all unique ways of processing the coffee from the cherry and removing the skin and the flesh and drying them out. And before they get to export, because it's a lot more complex than just grabbing the cherries and shoving them in a bag, you need to look at different processes along the way that can drastically affect the flavor. So after the cherries are plucked from the tree, they're sorted into the higher quality ones and the lower quality ones, and they're also removing things like twigs, dirt, stone, unripe or damaged coffee cherries and then they go on to what's referred to as processing. So let's talk about the natural process. This is by far the oldest and the easiest method. It started way back in the days where it was started in Ethiopia. And it's simply laying the coffee cherries with the skin around it out on slabs or tarps or on raised sunbeds in the sun for days on end until all of those complex sugars are absorbed into the seeds and that's what will come through in the coffee flavour. Now sometimes these cherries are actually dried out in the sun for 15 to 30 days so they need to be turned constantly so that the bottom layer of cherries don't over ferment or go rancid. And so what happens is they dry out and all of that lovely crust around the outside of the seed is easy to crack open. And it just gives these beautiful characteristics which are really bold and intense and fruity. The natural process, or sometimes it's called as the unwashed process, which is for obvious reasons, was developed in Africa where there was a lack of water. And it wasn't very consistent. So it was looked upon as a lower quality type of coffee process. However, nowadays, it's actually highly sought after because you get these amazing, robust bursts of fruity flavor in your cup with a heavy body, a heavy mouth feel over your tongue. And scientists are working all the time now to make this a more accurate process. So they're monitoring how long it takes, how fast that dries out, and the moisture content is so they're getting more and more accurate with this coffee and it just creates a beautiful, beautiful flavor. As a general rule of thumb, the natural processed coffees are better suited for black coffees because their intense flavors and often citrus flavors don't cut through the milk very well and often dissipate pretty quickly. If you're walking into a coffee bar, then they're gonna have the right coffee for your milk anyway, so you don't really have to worry, and especially if it's a specialty bar like we have. But if you're ordering online, and you know that you drink cappuccinos and lattes at home, then stay away from the natural processed coffees. Now let's look at the wet process. So the wet process was very common among Central and South America because of the abundance of water. And unlike the natural process, it strips away all of the flesh at the very beginning and uses a wet depulper to get rid of all of that mucilage around the seed. So you end up with this very clean and balanced flavor. Because the coffee cherries are cleaned first, none of those complex sugars from the flesh around that are absorbed into the bean itself. So if you're looking at a wet processed or a washed coffee, you know that the variety, the terroir, the soil, the origin of the country are the key factors in what that flavor is. So this method has actually led to a lot of the African coffees being fully washed to highlight that really beautiful characteristic of the coffee variety itself. 
And so if you're drinking cappuccinos and flat whites, then a washed coffee is gonna go great in that because the clean, balanced profile will cut through that milk and you will be able to taste the natural characteristics and that higher, brighter acidity as well. It's important to note that both of these coffee processes have their own merits. And as the technologies evolve, the accuracy becomes greater. So they can refine those methods to make sure that no matter how you drink your coffee, whether it be without milk or in a milk drink, that the flavors of those coffees are gonna push through. So it comes down to just a personal preference for you. And I'm only giving you this as a guideline so that when you're shopping online, you know what the word process means. Now we've covered the two most common processes, then there's a bunch of experimental methods as well, but mostly they're a variation or some combination of those two. But the next one that is pretty common, and you might have seen it, is called the honey process, or otherwise it can be known as the pulp natural, semi-natural, semi-washed. Honey processing has nothing to do with the beans being drizzled in honey or a vat of honey soaking all of those lovely seeds. It actually comes from the feel, that stickiness of the mucilage around the seed when you first peel off the skin. So to achieve the honey process, they first depulp the cherry, which is take the skin off, leave the mucilage on there and then dry them out in the sun like a natural processed coffee is. Now there's many different variations of that. There's black honey, gold honey, red honey, purple honey, white honey, and they're all different variations of the same process. And that is how much mucilage is left on that seed. So the more the mucilage is left on, the darker that cherry will turn when it's dried out in the sun, and therefore it's called black or purple honey. So just to clarify again, semi-washed, honey processed and depulp natural are all essentially words for the same process. And it can get quite technical with a lot of science going into this processing now. And the flavors that you'll see in your cup will be a nicer rounded acidity, so not as sharp. It's a more balanced fruitiness and not as intense as some as just the straight natural and also great for using in both black coffees and with milk. So they're your three major processing and you'll see variations of those, but there are also some of the experimental fermentation ones, like I mentioned before, the carbonic maceration and the anaerobic fermentation. These are wine producing techniques that they're now applying to coffee to see if they can get different flavors out of the coffee. But that would take another 50 hour video to explain all of those because they are another level of science that even I don't quite understand. But just so you know, when you're looking for coffee online, unless you were really, really, really deep into your coffees and you're drinking them as filters or as black coffees only, just stay clear of those carbonic macerations or anaerobic fermentation labels because they're gonna taste pretty intense and sometimes I find the flavor to be a little bit over fermented. So hopefully that clarifies what coffee processing is and next time when you see it on a coffee label you understand, ah, that's what it means for me. And over the next couple of videos, we'll look at other factors that will also create flavors in your cup. And I hope that you enjoy them to start your journey on understanding what affects coffee flavors and how that makes your drink taste different. As always, I'm Ryan from Coffee Beans Delivered. Enjoy your brew.